I want to give you a little bit of background into my experience with burnout. Um, I know you also probably have your own story, uh, multiple stories of burnout, as do I. But my defining experience really with burnout came uh, when Corby and I, uh, we were at a church in Oregon. Uh, we had lived there for, I don't know, five, six, seven years. And he was senior pastor, a small church, a uh, small church of uh, lovely people who really had no <laughs> interest in serving. So as happens in a smaller church, the uh, pastor, spouse, family, and maybe a handful of volunteers end up taking on a lot of responsibility. So at the time of this story, I actually, I think I was doing five or six regular roles in the church. Um, also, uh, my kids were in high school, be homeschooled. And they were also very involved in um, our community theater. I was on the board of directors in the theater. Uh, they were in public school for electives. Um, it was a small college town, so we were very involved in the college. We were super, super, super busy. Now, I am a get her done kind of girl, which is typical of people who uh, experience burnout repeatedly. So I was doing a lot and I was completely unaware of my own stress levels. <laughs> Big problem. Uh, so it all culminated with uh, me having a tantrum in my backyard <laughs> where <laughs> I uh, was inappropriately expressing my overload by ripping my plants out of the ground, big giant tomato bushes and yanking them up and complaining and yelling. And um, my husband was, he has no memory of this, but he was appalled. He couldn't understand where this had come from. And I just was just trying to grapple with this sense of overload and burnout. And I remember distinctly telling him, you can choose one thing. I will do one thing for the church. And he was like, you don't have to do anything. <sighs> so this was the culmination of a buildup of burnout. And when I now consider uh, us, me, myself as a human, um, and really growing into uh, faith and my own experience with God and this spiritual self, um, I have come to look at it through the lens of holistic Christianity. And by that, I mean, we are not just body, we are not just spirit, and we're not just soul. We are all three. They are very integrated. And um I can now see, looking back, that um, I was neglecting my body. I was over-exercising, um, sort of paying attention to nutrition, uh, not resting at all, at all. Uh, my soul, so we're going to define the soul as the, uh, the whole human experience that encompasses body, emotions, thoughts, the inner self. Um, my soul was completely unattuned. As I said, I didn't realize I was stressed. If you would have asked my husband, he would have said, you're stressed. But I was like, no, I'm just functioning. I'm just doing it. Um, but at the same time, my thoughts and my emotions were resentful. <laughs> they were dysregulated. Um, they were spurting out of me um, because I couldn't contain them anymore. And part of this was due to the fact that uh, I didn't have much of a support network around me. A lot of times when you are involved in a lot of things and you're the doer, you um, don't have a lot of people to go to or you don't allow yourself to go to people and express your feelings. A lot of my friendships were based on the fact that I was serving them or providing something for them. Um, and so there was very little coming back in to restore my own soul. Spiritually, um, got to be honest, the only times I really gave God the time of day were when I were was ministering or preparing to minister, preparing a Bible study, um, 
you know, any of those things. And so I felt dry and unfulfilled. I was bored. Um, I thought, I remember distinctly thinking there has to be more than this, has to be more than this. Uh, and so all of that culminated in the tantrum in my backyard. Okay, so now we really get into the nitty gritty of dealing with this topic. And I have to tell you, I actually have like a whole three to four hour seminar class that I teach on living um, Christianity in a holistic way. And really it deals with stress and burnout. Um, so I'm going to try to condense here. <laughs> so I want to look at it again through the lens of body, soul, and spirit, the whole self. Um, and really dealing with burnout actually begins with recognizing where you're at, um, being honest about where you're at. So part of that is taking a look, paying attention. So let's look at the body. You might uh, notice fatigue <laughs> with burnout. Uh, you might be feeling wired but tired. Uh, these are signs of your adrenal system really just starting to get worn out. Um, and that's really highly related to your stress response. Uh, a lot of times you might notice weight gain, uh, weight loss, or difficulty with either. A lot of times <laughs> uh, burnout and stress directly affects your digestive system. So too much, too little, weird um, this is actually one of my other favorite topics. Uh, so you may be noticing digestive upset. Um, also, maybe uh, dysregulated eating patterns. Have you noticed you are stress eating or not eating because you're too busy or craving things? Um, these are signs. Oh, also big one uh, is not sleeping, <laughs> having problems going to sleep, waking up in the middle of the night. Um, so body signs of burnout. Uh, moving into the soul, remember that's that inner self, thoughts, emotions, and body integrated. You may be noticing your emotions are super out of whack, disproportionate to the situation. Um, how about problems in relationships? Maybe you are pulling away from people and situations and just really craving uh, time alone under the covers. Maybe you want to hide. Maybe you dream of running away to a beach by yourself. Uh, you might be experiencing anxiety or depression. In the spirit, um, I know I mentioned before, I felt really distant. Um, he felt impersonal. Uh, my time with him was dry. You might be feeling unfulfilled by spiritual practices that you once engaged in that were really rewarding and, and uh, giving you that connection that you crave to God. Um, perhaps the whole thing is boring and you kind of start to question, why am I doing any of this? What's the point? Um, and again, maybe you'll notice that your only interaction with God comes in times of service. I'm sure you can add to each of these categories uh, as you start to attend to your own experience of burnout or maybe reflect on past burnout. I'm kind of getting tired of saying the word burnout. Hmm. Fatigue. I don't know. Anyway, those are some signs that you might want to notice and pay attention to. Okay, so it's at this point that a lot of times we can start to look at ourselves and say, well, I messed up. Like, yuck. And what am I supposed to do? Like, I'm supposed to do all these perfect things and add to my burden because I have to do this and I should be doing that and I need to fix the way I feel and think about this. And no, pause. Let's take a moment to just kind of absorb <laughs> the love of God and the truth uh, that can lift this burden of feeling like I got to fix my burnout. Uh, number one, you are beloved. <laughs> one of my favorite concepts is this truth that there is nothing you can do that would cause God to love you anymore or any less. 
So this means there's no role you need to take on, no action, no anything that's going to affect how God feels about you. You are beloved, just as you are. The person he created is beloved. It doesn't matter about your roles or your contributions or your illness or the fact maybe that you're bed bound like I am several times a week. Um, He loves you just as you are. He also protects you. He protects you from overwhelm and burden and burnout. Scripture says God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability, but he will also provide a way of escape that you may be able to endure it. And I go into this much deeper in my class, but the way of escape is your actual relationship with him. And sometimes the way of escape is looking at your plate and removing things. So he protects you. You are also invited. You're invited into that restful relationship with him where zero striving is required. Just being. You're a human being, not a human doing. And finally, know that you are restored by God. One of my favorite stories uh, in the Old Testament is of Elijah, where I can't even remember the situation, but basically he was over it, right? Um, Doing too much, overwhelmed, complaining, like he'd had it. And God basically takes him away and says, it was an angel came to minister to him, lay down under this bush, take a nap. And when he woke up, have a snack and then go to sleep again. And after that, we'll talk about what you need to do. So there's restoration. (laughs) There is restoration available to you. Uh, And really the key is, is listening and stepping into the rest and being nourished and restored by God. It's just being present. So I'd love to share just some ideas about that with you in a moment. Okay, so I know I told you (laughs) that uh, healing from your burnout really doesn't depend on you, but you do have a role, okay? So part that role, not even part of it, that role, it really is just uh, examining you and what's going on with you, and maybe making some changes that are going to nourish you and allow you to live with intention uh, instead of uh, reactively. Big deal. Uh, So looking again at the body, this is uh, really hard. Honestly, I think of these different areas that we talk about body, soul, and spirit, and and making changes, um, letting go of things in relation to our physical self is a big challenge. So uh, beginning to live intentionally in the body, I would say rest is a huge part of managing or avoiding burnout, building times of physical rest into your life. Um, Physical rest, yes. And then also um, building in things that will actually nourish and restore you. Uh, So part of that is paying attention to where you're at and um, maybe listening to God about where you need to be. Factually, uh, diet plays a big part of this. Physiologically, um, we are not designed to function and live off of processed foods. So uh, if you're going to make any changes dietarily, I would say just start with eating real food with a a good balance of proteins and fats and um, plant-based carbohydrates. Uh, Fresh is best. And I know that's a huge challenge. So again, big topic, big topic. I would say start slow. Um, 
This is part of my work as a nutritional therapist is just really helping people to make these small changes uh, build to better health. Um, we need to be moving our bodies, which when we're overloaded and burdened and our schedule is fuller than God ever intended it to be, is very difficult. And I am not talking about CrossFit. <laughs> <laughs> or anything that may seem super unattainable to you. I'm just talking about some basic restorative movement, um, gentle walking, gentle stretching, any of these small movement things, things, activities that you can build into your day. This is hard. And again, I know we don't like to acknowledge that the body has anything to do with our spirituality but it's enormous. It's enormous. When your body is out of whack, your spirit starts to crumble and your soul will feel the effects. So I encourage you to small changes, drink more water, sleep, rest. Okay. No guilt and no shame. Lots of grace, but a lot of times the body needs just a little more love. Okay. Moving into the area of the soul. This can be challenging. Uh, it also can be kind of a little fun, a little interesting. Um, it begins with actually looking at what is on your plate. What, what does your life consist of? The responsibilities and activities and desires and schedule and hobbies, um, demands, all of these things. Just taking a look at that with God. What is on my plate? And going a little deeper actually is examining your motivation to serve. Why do you keep saying yes? I'm going to let that sit there. That's some serious soul work, usually uh, needing to be done companioned, maybe with a spiritual director or a good friend or clergy. Why? Why do you keep saying yes? Hmm. So then taking a look at what I call feeders and suckers. So you're looking at what's on your plate. You're looking at why you're motivated to keep saying yes and do all the things. And then we look at, well, these things that I'm doing and, and what I'm involved in, what, what things are actually feeding my soul? What are um, drawing me closer to God and his people, um, you know, bringing me that sense of fulfillment, fulfilling my own desires? That counts, right? The things that feed you and nourish you and energize you and allow you to say yes. And also looking at the things that are suckers. What's sucking your energy? What are the things that you dread? What are the things you regret saying yes to? <laughs> what are the relationships that are sucking your life away? <laughs> uh, causing you to sigh deeply. Be honest feeders, suckers. Uh, taking a look at the quality or quantity of nourishing spiritual friendships. Friendship is a big deal. Are there people in your life that are building you up, listening to you, hmm. calling you out, loving you? Hmm. And taking all of these things to your loving father and saying, what, is this you? <laughs> what if this is you? What of this have, have you called me to? Um, what do I need to let go? Where does my attitude need to change? Where do my actions need to change? Ideally, before you say yes to anything, this work would be done. This is a process of discernment. So I'm bad at this. <laughs> I, I, I will say yes before I stop to discern. Is this you, God? 
Like, I know I, I'm capable of doing this thing or serving in this way or meeting this need, but is this you? Do I say yes to this? Um, and again, spiritual direction is a fantastic place to process all of this. Um, okay. So spirit, living with intention in the spirit and nourishing your spirit, that part of you that is designed to eternally connect with God. A big part of this, I think, is, is uh, discovering how you were wired to connect with God. And there's a great book. I think it's called Pathways to God. Um, I meant to be better prepared with resources for you, but uh, Pathways to God, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and it's the author goes through just several different ways that we are individual um, created uniquely to connect with God. So we think about common ones, like I really feel close to God in nature. I feel close to God when I am worshiping scripture. I love to study scripture. I feel super close to God in scripture or the, um, aspects of our liturgical service really cause me to experience God's presence. Um, there's several more, but learning how you're wired to connect. So you're not trying uh, futilely to shove yourself into a hole or a pathway to God that he didn't really create you for, right? So dive into that. And part of that really is learning um, about yourself. Um, I love the Enneagram. I know it was super trendy for a while, but it's an amazing, amazing tool for learning who God created you to be. Um, and then learning about, you know, the edges of growth. <laughs> so also uh, taking a look here at what keeps you from connecting with God or feeling um, in your spirit that, you know, you're experiencing him or you have this active honest and loving relationship with him. So this may be wounds. Actually, it's usually wounds that you're dealing with um, boundaries. You come up against a wall. You're uh, protecting yourself, different things. It's, it's worth looking at what keeps you from connecting with God. That's deep work and it takes a long time. Um, but I feel like it's important that we're aware of that. And we want to live with intention to avoid this sense of burnout. A beautiful way of nourishing your spirit and that connection, God, is actually um, interactive prayer. So that sounds weird. I just mean like listening, being peaceful in prayer, being expressive, being receptive, being silent. Uh, I love to think about the way that we participate in conversation with uh, friends and loved ones. It's not all one-sided. It's not always verbal, right? Yeah, God longs just to have that time with you. He has things to say, and it's a process to learn to listen and discern what he's saying. So. And then finally, um, for today, <laughs> engaging with God in scripture. Um, yes, reading scripture, receiving scripture, listening to scripture, but also diving into it and allowing yourself maybe to immerse yourself in this story, um, to use your imagination and your senses, um, wonderful spiritual practices that allow us to experience scripture that way. And there's lots of different names for them. Um, I call it sometimes imaginative Bible reading, um, where you just kind of explore that passage as though you were there and then wonder why, why did I receive an experience of this way? And Lord, what are you pointing out to me? Um, also, uh, Lexio Divina is a way of engaging with scripture in this way, allowing the spirit to um, reveal to you what he has for you in the passage in that very day, listening, responding, receiving, resting. So these are some ways that we can proactively and even reactively uh, begin to live with intention in the area of burnout. And I hope you find these helpful. Okay, my friends, that's what I have for you. 
Um, I really appreciate spending this time with you today. Um, may the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and give you peace. Um, I do have my contact information here on this slide, um, my website, my email, my phone number. I am available for a spiritual direction, nutritional therapy. I offer uh, free liturgical-based uh, yoga classes on YouTube uh, under Tree and Leaf Wellness. Also available for uh, workshops and retreats and anything like that. Um, but again, just be blessed. I hope you experience some rest.